Mortification is a technique used in Christian asceticism to train the soul toward virtuous and holy living. Welcome to SD Kaysen Courses. Today's lesson is on Christian mortification. The concept comes from St. Paul, who draws a comparison between Christ dying as a mortal and rising to an immortal life, and his followers renouncing their sinful past and rising through grace to a new life of holiness. The Apostle states, If you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if through the Spirit you mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. Romans chapter 8, verse 13, Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, and Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. From this original meaning, we see that mortification, in one sense, is a law of death, but in another, more fundamental sense, it is a law of life, elevating rather than destroying nature. What it kills is the disease of the soul, and by killing this, it restores and strengthens the soul's true life. Among the diseases it aims to kill, sin, the soul's one mortal disease, takes precedence. It annihilates sin committed by urging true repentance and the use of those means of forgiveness and restoration that the Lord has entrusted to His church. It overcomes temptations to sin by encouraging the will to accept hardships rather than succumb to the temptations. Mortification is mandatory for all to this extent, but those who desire to serve Christ more thoroughly take it further, attempting to suppress as much as possible in this life the rebellion of the flesh against the spirit which is the internal driving force of sin. To achieve this victory, concupiscences, passions, and sensual desires that exert a harmful influence on human behavior when indulged freely must be trained through careful repression to submit and conform their desires to the rule of reason and faith as understood by the mind. However, for this training to be effective, it is not enough to restrain these fleshly desires only when their demands are unlawful. They represent a twist in nature and must be treated as one would treat a twisted wire when trying to straighten it, that is, by twisting it in the opposite direction. Thus, in various areas of ascetic practice, devout Catholics are consistently found denying themselves even in matters that are admittedly lawful. Seen as a way to cure bad habits and establish good ones, mortification has a recognized place in the methods of those pursuing purely natural goals. What sets Christian mortification apart is its reliance on divine grace to achieve its spiritual objectives, not just the natural effectiveness of its methods, but also the earnestness in self-discipline and the Christian motivation that allows it to plead powerfully with God. Additionally, mortification is practiced as an atonement for past sins and shortcomings. The Catholic Church believes that although only Christ's atonement can provide adequate expiation for the sins of humanity, people should not use that as an excuse for inaction. Instead, they should strive to add their own expiations to the extent of their ability and consider such personal expiations very pleasing to God. This is why many mortifications practiced by devout individuals are not directly curative of evil tendencies, but take the form of painful exercises and self-imposed privations because they are painful, such as fasting, hard beds, and abstaining from lawful pleasures. However, these external mortifications are not effective in themselves, as spiritual writers constantly emphasize that the internal mortification of pride and self-love in their various forms is essential. External penances are beneficial only insofar as they arise from this internal spirit and contribute to promoting it. And that was Christian mortification in a nutshell. Thanks for learning with us. Until next time, may God bless you forever and ever.